it's Annelie again. Today I'm in Garching, near Munich. I'm standing in front of the Max Planck Institute for the Extraterrestrial Physics, where they observe the universe using many techniques such as X-rays and gamma rays. I'll be speaking with Reinhard Genzel, who actually discovered the big black hole in the center of our galaxy. Um, so what does it mean that there is a big black hole in the middle of our galaxy? Well, think of it just as a big, big concentration of matter. You know? Just pile up the matter in there, and at some point it becomes black. Light doesn't escape anymore. But what do you mean that it's in the middle of our galaxy? What exactly is our galaxy? Well, you see, we are, you, know, you know the sun, and you know, the Earth goes around the sun. The sun and all the other suns around our neighborhood go all around the center of the Milky Way. The Milky Way you know, is this, this bright uh, band here of stars, and then the very center of it is a very dense concentration of more stars. And basically everything swirls around that, that big center. And in this very central region, there's a black hole. But how do you know that there's actually a black hole there? How did you find out that there well, was that? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a tricky story because, <laughs> of course, uh, black holes, by definition, are not very bright right. most <laughs> of the time, <laughs> I should say. It's not always true. And so you really can sense only if there's a black hole or not by, by gravity. Well, think of the sun, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, Kepler, of course, has shown that, you know, the planets move around the sun. And, and because there is a central sun, as you go closer and closer to the sun, the, the, the planets which are closer move faster. So if the sun wouldn't shine, okay, you couldn't see it, but mm -hmm. still the same thing would happen. You know, the more distant planets go slower and the, mm -hmm. the inner ones go faster. And that's what we do. We, we look for, you know, planets. Well, these are stars. Right. And so we go in the center of a Milky Way, and then we measure the motions of these stars as precisely as we can. And that's the trick, to do it really very well, to come very, very close to the center. And that's, that's really very challenging. Once you've done that, you can look whether there's something invisible in the center. Okay. How big is the black hole? Well, because it's, it's you know, such an enormous concentration of matter, the one we have in our Milky Way is about the size of the sun, a little bigger size of the sun. But of course, the mass of it is several million times the mass right. of the sun. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tremendous concentration. If you wanted to turn the, mil uh, the, the Earth into a black hole, it would be as small as one centimeter across. So what came first, the galaxy or the black hole? We don't know. Really? Okay. We don't know. We don't know. We are, we're looking for it. What we do know is that this all ha happened in a very distant past, and that's very exciting. In fact, we've learned that the galaxies, the Milky Ways, which we live in, all these stars, as well as these big black holes, you know, it formed sort of at the same time. Chicken okay. and egg, we don't know yeah. quite which was first, but any, sort of at the same time, and rather soon after the Big Bang occurred soon on the scale of our current age of the universe, which is 13 billion years. So that happened about a billion years after, so a thirteenth, a tenth, mm -hmm. say, of our present age. That's when they formed. And in fact, we now are understanding that these black holes, as spectacular as they might be, they're only a small amount of the material of a, of a Milky Way. Okay. about a thousandth of, of the mass, still they seem to you know, have interacted back then with these galaxies disturbed and, and in fact shaped their evolution quite a bit. So it's sort of like a symbiosis between you know, two, two things coming together and very important in their interaction. And how did you end up making this discovery? <laughs> Actually, I, you know, when I was a young scientist, I, I got fascinated by this idea by working with a very famous physicist in California who started this uh, work. And then over the years, I became more fascinated. Right. And then uh, we started big programs. And now it's 25 years later, and we are pretty sure now. And the measurements which we have been able to make have a lot to do with big telescopes and complex technology and very sensitive ways of, of measuring radiation. And so we can see, in fact, the motion of, of stars, very precise measurements of stars moving around that black hole, like planets, uh, mm -hmm. around the sun. So the, uh, the, the, you know, the resulting uh, story then can be seen in this movie, which you will see here. Basically, you know, this experiment we've yeah. been doing is sort of, you know, exploring the motions of the stars. And, and what you see here, in fact, is sort of a, a summary, if you like, of what we've done for the last 
uh, 15, 17 years, and it's a, it's a fantastic situation. It looks like an, an, an atomic system, if you like, where, or a planetary system where these, these dots, the stars, surround, you know, move around the, the, the atomic nucleus or, or the, the sun. But that object in the center, that's the black hole. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so they move around the, the black hole just like the planets around the uh, sun. And as you see, these, these orbits of different width and orientation and so forth. So they, they are sort of a precision tool, it turns out, to really explore, uh, explore that central mass. And so we can be very sure on the basis of these measurements now that there must be really a black hole as long as we can believe uh, actually general relativity. Um, for your discovery, uh, what kind of technology was needed? Well, first of all, you have, to, you have to somehow look into the galactic center. See, what we see here is, is the visible image. And, you know, we're looking at this wonderful, you know, right. plane of the Milky Way. And you see in the very center sort of a brightening. That's, that's sort of the concentration of stars in the galactic center region. Okay. But then when you look closely what a galactic center is, and that is sort of marked in this way right. by, this, so by this laser beam, there's sort of a black thing, and that is dust, which is between us and the Milky Way center. So it turns out, in our, with our eyes or in the optical, we can actually not look into the galactic center. So we have to have technology to look at wavelengths, at, at, at electromagnetic radiation, which can penetrate this, this muck. Okay? And that turns out to be longer waves, infrared waves. So we have to have sensors, detectors, as we say, which, you know, like CCDs, take pictures uh, of the galactic at longer wavelengths. Then the next thing is, as you know, you know, we are in the Earth, and above us is the Earth atmosphere. And the Earth atmosphere, uh, you know, there's winds and there's motion of everything. Think of the, 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 the thing when you, when you look on a hot day across a road and you see right, the, 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 exactly. the, the light flimmering, yeah. right? Well, that's, that's our atmosphere. And so that doesn't make uh, for good, very good imaging. In yeah. fact, to make these big telescopes, these are telescopes telescopes as large as 10 meters in diameter, they in principle have very sharp eyes, so to speak, but the atmosphere prevents us to, to really make the best pictures. And so we have to correct for this stupid <laughs> effect of the atmosphere mm -hmm. through technology, which you call adaptive optics. So basically, like Münchhausen, pull yourself out of the swamp by, by measuring what the atmosphere does to the waves, to the radiation, and then undo what the atmosphere makes, and then you make very sharp images. Okay. In that way, we can see sharper with these telescopes by far than the Hubble Space Telescope. Wow. Okay. How did you get into doing this and discovering this, and what, what got you onto? Science in general. Well, you know, I, uh, well, okay, I, I'm coming <laughs> from a science family, so oh, in that sense I have yeah. some herit <laughs> hereditary problem, if you like. <laughs> but I think research I found always fascinating, and, and you know, I, at some point I, I sort of oscillated between biology and astrophysics, ended up in astrophysics, and so then, you know, it's a bit of a, a random course almost. There are certain things you do and certain things you can do. Uh, at that time, in Germany anyhow, uh, astronomy was not a very popular field and, you know, it's just sort of got started. I started in radio astronomy and then I moved to the U.S. and I did other things and I became infrared astronomer and I came back to Germany. And so over time, you know, there's certain mm, uh, scientific questions which, which, which fascinate you. In my case, it's that, that thing and right. many other things. Right. Well, thank you very much for talking okay. to me today. Great. Thank you.